Did you know that you can cause your network to be offline just by installing a new switch in your network? Now, this can happen because of different reasons. So to help you prevent that from happening, I'm going to show you 10 easy steps that you can follow before installing a new switch in your network. Now, be using this Cisco Catalyst switch. This is a uh, model 3750. And to manage this switch, we're going to use uh, one of its ports. So it has two ports here in the back. This is the serial or console port. You can see the blue tag on there. And we have the management or out of band management interface, kind of yellow. Uh, so the management interface, this is used in case uh, we don't want to manage the switch using the front ports or the service ports. So it has a dedicated interface just for management. So for things like uh, SSH, Telnet, or uh, SNMP for services dedicated only for management and not for data services. And we'll be using the serial or console port. In this case, we need this uh, serial, not serial, actually, rollover or console cable to connect to this switch. As you can see, this cable, it has uh, one of its uh, interfaces. It's RJ45, so we're going to connect here on the serial or console port. And the other edge, we're going to connect into our computer. And then we're going to use PuTTY to access this switch, okay? So I'm going to power on this switch and we're going to see how to start uh, preparing the switch before installing in the network. Okay, we're going to open PuTTY and we're going to select serial. Now here on serial, we have to choose, okay, which serial line we're going to use. Now, when we connect the USB port to the computer, uh, it is going to show a new connection. And to know this serial connection number, we're going to open manage on this PC uh, kind of properties and going to navigate to device manager ports and it can either be COM1 or COM2. Now, in this case, I already know it's COM2, so that's the connection or the serial connection we're going to use. So I'm going to close this and back on party, I'm going to select COM2 and open. Okay, and we are inside the switch. Now, as you can see, this switch already has some configuration on it. So the first step we want to take is to erase the configuration in the existing switch okay so we're going to uh the privilege mode and we have a password here so i have password so the first thing we want is write erase okay so this is going to uh delete the startup configuration so that when we reboot the switch uh we will have a switch with kind of default configuration okay so we want to confirm that now Second step is to delete the VLAN database. We don't know if this switch already had uh, VLANs configured, so we want to delete all of those VLANs. So for this, we're going to run the command um, delete uh, flash and the file VLAN.tat. We're going to confirm that and delete. Okay, so now these two files uh, were deleted so now we're going to reboot the switch so reload confirm now system configuration has been modified we don't want to save that because recall that we deleted the startup configuration file so we're going to select no and we're going to proceed with reload okay the switch is back so let's continue with the configuration so now we should have a blank switch and it's Prompt us for this message. Would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? I'm just going to say no, I don't want. Okay, and let's start the configuration. So, so far we deleted the configuration, we deleted the VLAN database. Next, we want to check the version of this software. And this is one of the steps that we have to do before installing a new switch is to upgrade to the most updated version. Now, I'm not going to do this step now, uh, just for the sake of the time. Probably I'm going to cover this on the future video, but we want to confirm, okay, what is the current uh, software version? 
and to which version should we upgrade the switch also related to this step we have to check uh the available space in the switch so how much space we have available to install to transfer the new uh software image in case we want to upgrade or in case we have to delete an image from the switch itself as you can see there are three files here we don't need three files on the switch okay next we're going to actually start configuring the switch so we go to configuration mode and first thing i like to do is to disable vtp so vtp mode off now vtp it is used for virtual tracking protocol it is the protocol used between switches to exchange vlan information essentially it allows you to have uh, an infrastructure kind of a server client where you have one switch as the server and the other switches as the, as the clients so that whenever you make a change on one switch for instance you want to add a new vlan or you want to remove an existing vlan all you have to do is just on one single switch and this information will be advertised to other switches okay but uh we're not going to use or most of the environments uh we don't actually use vtp and it's actually not recommended to run vtp at all so i'm going to disable this protocol now the next step that i like to do as well is to uh set the spanning tree mode to rapid spanning tree by running the command spanning tree mode rapid pgst by default the switches they uh, are running the traditional 802.1d spanning tree mode now uh, this version it's okay uh, but it is kind of outdated uh, it is recommended to use uh, rapid pvc because it has some advantages uh, that we don't see in traditional spanning tree such as the ports being enabled in less time and also other features that i'm not going to dive right now into this but the it, it is best to use rapid pvst over uh, the traditional spanning tree mode okay so another feature that i also have to enable is uh spanning tree port fast default okay this will cause the switch to immediately uh, enable the ports that connect to end device for instance if you have a computer connected to one of the ports so when they connect the computer in the switch we want that that port to be initially forwarding uh, traffic instead of going through the STP process of listening learning and probably after 30 seconds also the port will start forwarding the traffic okay so we want once uh, a pc and then the user connects to the port it starts immediately sending the traffic now the next command that we have to use is spanning tree uh port fast actually let's see uh bpdu guard yes default okay so bpdu guard and actually let me use the other one as well bpdu filter okay so these two commands they are used as kind of a protection mechanism so it works like this if i'm using port fast to be enabled on ports that connect to end devices such as computer it's not expected that a computer starts sending uh bpdus and bpdu this is the protocol that switches use to exchange information so essentially what we're saying is on port fast enabled ports uh, is not expected to have a switch connected there now by using a bpdu guard one uh in case if we receive a bpdu on that port we want the switch to uh, disable that port immediately so we're not supposed to receive bpdus there because this might actually be an attack someone is trying to take over the layer 2 network by setting bpdus by becoming the root bridge and i'm going to talk more about root bridge in a minute and the other feature is bpdu filter so bpdu filter uh it doesn't act like bpdu guard but in case we receive bpdus on that port so 
the switch uh, will start receiving BPD using that port, so the port status will be lost. So it is recommended to use these two by default, and we can enable it globally or at port level. Now, I mentioned also BPDU uh, bridge priority. So if this is the first switch that I'm installing in the network, I also like to make the first switch as the root bridge. As you probably know, the root bridge is the switch with the lowest bridge priority. And the bridge priority is made of the system priority and the MAC address. So uh, by default, the switches that have the lowest MAC address or the oldest ones, they would be elected as the root bridge. So to prevent that from happening, I want to manually force the switches to have a specific priority. And so in this case, I want this switch to be the root bridge for my network. So I'm going to set spanning tree VLAN from uh, one to uh, actually 4290, let's see, 4294, uh, actually priority, and then I'm going to set to zero. Okay, let me see if did spanning tree. Just confirm that, yes. So now any new switch that will be connected in this network, it won't be elected the root bridge. And finally, well, we have to give this switch a name, as obvious. And these are all the steps that you have to take before installing a new switch in the network. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the switch to the latest updated version. I hope to see you in the next one.